Hi guys, welcome to episode 33 of the Nitty McPurly podcast. I am Devin Ventry, Nitty McPurly on Instagram and Ravelry. Um, there's a Ravelry group on the, there's a Nitty McPurly group on Ravelry and you can find me there, but I am admittedly way better at Instagram and email if you want to get in touch with me. People email me and it makes my whole day. I am Devin at nittymcpurly.com. So you can email me there or PM me on Instagram and I would love to hear from you. If I do not respond, get my attention because I have missed it somehow. I never ignore people, never. Okay, I'm so excited. I have my kids back in this room here, occupied, and hopefully they will stay that way. There's no adult back there. There's just my oldest daughter. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> But I think this is prettier. This is kind of the prettiest room in my house, so we'll try this and, and see how it goes. Um, first of all, I have so many things I want to tell you, like tons of things. I'm just going to put this down. <clears throat> I'm so excited. I was able to attend a couple of fiber festivals um, recently. I went to the Frederick Fiber Festival in Frederick, Maryland, which was amazing. It was small but amazing, like I loved it. It was mostly indoors in these buildings and it was small. Parking wasn't crazy, nothing was crazy. It was a lot of local people, you know, a lot of like, we have this particular breed of sheep and it's, you know, farm to skein type thing. Um, but there was also a few amazing dyers, which I'm gonna tell you about, uh, one in particular who I just discovered and is now like my new favorite dyer. And Magpie Fibers was there. It was wonderful. And I got to go with my friend Lisa, the one who uh, test knit my James cardigan, the picture. Um, I always say that James pullover, the one that you saw the picture last time. So I went with her and that was really fun. Um, and I also went to the one in Berryville, the Shenandoah Fiber Festival, uh, which was smaller than Maryland Sheep and Wool. Um, this one was in Berryville, Virginia. It was end of September. And for that one, I went with my oldest daughter and my youngest daughter. I basically said, who wants to come? That's who wanted to come. And going to a fiber festival with your kids is a very different experience from going to a fiber festival with your friend. So it was also fun. We had a good time, um, but they have less patience for looking at yarn. So I wanna tell you about some of the things that I got at these two fiber festivals. Um, and I'm gonna show you some of the things I bought and show you some of the things that I'm working on with some of the things that I bought and yeah, knitting, yay. Okay, so let's start with um, a hat design that I currently have on the needles. Oops. Um, this is one that I recently started. It has this seed stitch cable I love that. I love a seed stitch cable. I almost feel like this yarn might be too busy for it. Do you think? With these cables. I love a hat like this where it's kind of the same all the way around and you can pop it on really easily. It's not going to have much slouch, but it's definitely going to come down low enough. You know, my pet peeve with people who wear their hats up here. Why? Why are you wearing a hat? <laughs> so it's going to come down low enough, um, but it is not going to be slouchy. So yeah, you can kind of see, I'm, I'm really just about ready to start. I think that's why I stopped here because I'm ready to start the decreases and I wanted to, to write that up. Um, so I actually really like the way this fits. This fits really well. I was wondering if it was maybe too tight. This is a bulky weight yarn. I'll find the tag and I will tell you what this yarn is called. I got this yarn at Maryland Sheep and Wool uh, when I went in the summer, end of the summer with my family. And it's beautiful, it's by Echo View fiber mill and I really like it and it's a, a chunky bulky heavyweight I know that those are not interchangeable terms but it's a it's a bigger weight yarn I'm not exactly sure which it is it's one of those and I'm knitting it on um, I did size eights for the brim and size nines for um, this part and when I was at the Frederick fiber festival this past weekend it was recently was it last weekend I don't know I got this yarn from Magpie Fibers. You see that color? Oh. Apparently, I love yellow. Like, apparently, oh! 
try and do that a little more gracefully. <laughs> Apparently, I love yellow because when I was at this fiber festival, all the yarn that I picked was yellow. This is from Magpie Fibers. It is a blend. Uh, I looked for the ba ball band and I couldn't find it, but I will either put it up on the screen or I'll put it in the show notes, exactly what this is. But I remember the color is called Tupelo Honey. And I thought I would knit this hat in this yarn also because I just need this hat a lot. And when I was at the... Um, uh, the one in Berryville, Virginia, the Shenandoah Fiber Festival. I got this pop pop, and I think that that's just, yeah, I love it. It's gonna be great. So that's I'm working on that right now. I'm working on this hat design a little bit. It's it it has had to step aside for a moment because I have a few other things that I'm working on, which I'll show you. Um, but I really like this hat. I think it's gonna be great. So this will be out this uh, this fall at some point. Hopefully in a couple of colors and sizes and all that. Pom-pom, no pom-pom. Um, I got this pom-pom at a booth called Froggit Yarns. Um, which festival is that? Shenandoah Fiber Festival. And this was the cutest booth. We had to go in there because it was in like a trailer where they just opened the doors and that was their shop. They didn't have like a a tent or, you know, um, it was just like a shop on wheels. And it was so cool that, and I was with my kids and they were like, oh, let's go in there. So we go in there and my littlest daughter sees this frog that they have that's clearly part of the decor, like frog it yarn, you know, like that's their thing. My daughter just picks it up and she goes, we have to buy this. I buy this mommy. And I was like, uh, I don't think that's for sale, sweetheart. And the guy who works there goes, she can keep it. I was like, what, you just wait for somebody to come and fall in love with it? And he was like, yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that was super sweet. So then it, I had to buy something, <laughs> which I did not mind at all because they had amazing stuff. They had these amazing pom-poms. This was a good price. I think I paid $5 for this. And it's a really nice big puffy pom-pom. And it has this, someone took some scissors to it. Dangers of having children, but uh, you can just uh, like attach this onto your hat and then you can tie it in a bow inside the hat and just pop it off if you don't want it on there. So that's really nice. Um, the other thing, I'm going to empty it so I don't spoil the surprise of all the other stuff I want to talk about. The other thing I bought from them is this cute, handmade, free, fair trade, um, beautiful, I think these are made in Africa, these baskets, and I just love them. My friend Yvonne, who I, um, who does knitting retreats with me, she got me a big one of these when I had my last daughter, uh, and I use that thing all the time. And so when we saw these, and my, my littlest daughter picked this one out because it's pink. She was like, we get this one, mommy. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so we got this and that um, pom-pom from Froggit Yarn. Uh, they're also on Instagram if you want to check them out. Okay. So that's part of what's currently on my needles. The other thing that I wanna to talk to you about, and this is gonna be a little awkward. Okay, last time I filmed, I used a camera that we did not like. You might notice the video quality on that was not great, so this time I'm using my husband's phone. We'll see how this one looks, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm just gonna to have to kind of ungracefully back this up. You can see a little more of my, what's going on here. I wanna show you the sweater that I am wearing, uh, which is a pattern that's coming out soon. This is Inverness. And as you can see, it is too dark. Like, this is like charcoal, <laughs> but it almost looks black. And it has a beautiful texture up here and you really can't even see it. So I'm currently re-knitting that and I'll show it to you in a minute, but I wanna show you the fit because I just love the way that this fits. So it is kind of a cropped fit. And if you can see, there's some of the texture pattern there. And it has a lower hem in the back, but the hem is not split. You see this? So the texture goes all the way around and it's very, very wide, which I love. But the sleeves are slim. So it doesn't look like you're wearing a sweater that doesn't fit you. Clearly this is the right size sleeve. Now, there's a little bit of texture on the sleeves, and if you can see, there's some texture up here. Um, okay, this is the ungraceful part. La 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 la. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, the last time I talked about this, I mentioned um, the ease on the sleeves. And what I decided to end up doing was to go half an inch of ease on the sleeves. So, you know, this is not, it's not tight, it's just fitted, like it's comfortable. It's an extremely comfortable sweater to wear. I talked about this yarn on my video podcast last time and on my audio podcast, so I won't go into it too much, but I just wanna show you so you can see a little bit better this collar. Oh my gosh, isn't that beautiful? What's this called? I don't know. This is the same yarn, um, and I have mentioned how economical this yarn is. Even when I bought this yarn, it was on sale. This was not on sale. To knit this entire sweater shipped, it cost me $28, American dollars. So it's just, it's a very economical yarn. So I don't remember, I got my cable needle there. I don't remember the name of this color, but I will put it up there for you, either on the screen or in my show notes. And here you can see the texture just so much better, right? That's so much better. So this is unblocked, but you can see what that is. This is a combination of slipped stitches and very small cables. Um, and I modified this stitch pattern from where I saw it originally to make it easier to knit and more fun. Cause I kind of like it when you feel like you're flying a little bit and you're just woo woo woo. Um, I don't want to feel like I'm cabling all the time. There are not that many cable rows in the, in the whole sweater. There's not that many. Um, and it's mostly stockinette with some of the rows with slip stitches, which is super easy to work. Um, and now I'm thinking, gosh, I should have worked this in more than one color. How cool would that have been? But I'll put this out in the world and someone will, someone will. So anyway, this pattern is called Inverness and it is, in the process right now and hopefully we'll be ready for test knitters in the next few weeks. If you're interested in test knitting this, please send me an email or an Instagram message or one of those two things and I will let you know. I'll get you in the loop and we'll get you going on it. I have a, a, some people who are already interested who've already talked to me about it and said, please, I want to be on that sweater. So let me know um, if you're interested. So that is that. This is the sweater. Uh, I'm going to Canada next week to Edmonton to um, attend the Ann Bud Knit for Fun retreat again for a second year in a row. I'm very excited about that. That's gonna be awesome. And this is the project that I'm taking with me. I probably will end up taking a couple projects, but realistically to knit, make this turn into this, that's gonna take me a, a weekend at least. <laughs> this, these are uh, small needles and this is thin yarn, so. Yeah, so that's the project that's gonna be coming with me. If you are attending that retreat, this is crooked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> if you're attending that retreat, please come and find me and say hello. I would love to meet you, or if we already know each other, I would love to see you again. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of going all over because there's just like an overlap of, you know, yarn and new things and things on the needles but I just wanted to show you some more things that I have acquired recently. Um, this yarn is left over from the Metanoia shawl. I just posted a picture up yesterday on Instagram of that shawl. And for that, I used Clark and L in her three ply, 100% superwash merino. And this is a color called Maristella, which is like just a tonal gray. I love it love it. I use this in both of my school days shawls, one with a navy blue and one with like a copper penny kind of color. And it just, gosh, it's just such a beautiful color. And so I wanted a school days shawl for myself because both of those were to give away to people, one for my daughter, one for her principal. And I thought, how cool would it be if I <laughs> what's on there if I use mohair because I wanted a neutral and this is a yarn from Speckled Finch Studios I ordered online in a base a fluff base so it's a mohair silk base and the color is called Hayloft isn't that pretty wouldn't that make an awesome school day shawl I love it I love neutral because I when I sew I tend to gravitate toward pattern, you know, and like um, color. And so I just, I need more neutral accessories, hence all the gray knitting. So, and people just love to see gray knitting because everyone wants to knit in gray, right? 
Um, okay. I also wanted to show you more yellow yarn because apparently that's all I bought at these yarn festivals. I went a little crazy when I went with my friend, Lisa. Like I said, when I went with my children, it was, we spent a lot of money on food. <laughs> I didn't buy a lot because they just didn't have the attention span to stop and look at yarn. But when I went with Lisa, I mean, we looked at everything. We spent probably 45 minutes in the Magpie Fiber booth. It was huge, it was beautiful, it was everything that's modern right now. It was very black and white with music and a seating area, and it was gorgeous. It was mobbed, packed. For this festival, it was packed. I mean, you know, it wasn't like, you know, shoulder to shoulder, but a lot, a lot of people were at this booth, and it was just, yeah, it was great. The only thing that I bought was that yellow yarn I just showed you um, that I want to use for that hat, because by this point, I had to rein it in. <laughs> the new dyer who I discovered recently is 29 Bridges Studio, and she is in Maryland. And I walked up to her booth at this festival, and let me show you what she had out right in the front, these three. And I was like, you're my kind of gal. Look at those. So this is like a yellow. It is showing up maybe a little bit brown, but it's not, there you go, you can see it's yellow. And this is kind of like a micro stripe, I, I think, maybe a little bit, um, but of, you know, I don't know how you would describe this. Highly, highly variegated with a little bit of speckle in there in this shade. And then this one kind of ties those two together. This, it's so hard to show white yarn. Um, it's blowing out a little bit, but you can see it has kind of both of those in there. So I got a lot of this. You're going to be seeing this in some upcoming thing. There's so much going on right now, I don't have time to work with it right now, so I'm just looking at it. It's art. It's like, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> so uh, I got this there, and I got a bunch of them, like a lot, a sweater's quantity in these three colors, and I have a couple ideas of what I want to do with it, but... Oh, love. Um, but she is on Instagram, 29 Bridges Studio, based in Maryland. And you should check her out. I feel like with designer, with um, dyers, there's a certain level of talent that some people just have. This lady, this lady has it. I think she's just starting out dying, but she's wonderful. And she was a lovely person too, so I highly recommend all right, I am coasting right along here. Um, okay, we went to, what's that yarn store in Frederick, Maryland? Knot House. We went to Knot House Yarn. So we went and did the Fiber Festival, and then Lisa was like, you have to come see Knot House because it is just the cutest. And downtown Frederick is super cute. So we went down there and we walked around for a bit and we went to Knot House. And this is a wonderful yarn store. This is the yarn store where uh, Caitlin Hunter taught last year or within the past year and uh, with maybe her Cipolla, uh sweater, I think. Uh, but they had tons of samples. There were uh, Andrea Mowry samples and Caitlin Hunter samples and Stephen West samples. And um, yeah, these designers are just, they're so talented. And the yarn that they choose is so suited to the design and they had a lot of that yarn for sale and they had the samples knit in the yarn and they really knew how to sell it. It was a wonderful little store. Very, very cute. Lots of brick, lots of wood. Um, yeah, in Old Town Frederick and it was, it was great. It was hard to narrow it down. Again, by this point, I kind of had to rein it in a little bit. <laughs> um, but I did walk away with some yellow yarn. Mm. I think these are both from, nope, this one is from Nice and Knit, which I had not heard of before, and this is a mohair. Um, again, about 450 yards uh, mohair silk, but that, I just love this. I feel like these are going to be something together. Isn't that beautiful? Look at all that. Look at that. It's like navy blue and kind of a coral color light yellow, dark yellow, almost a little bit of green. This one is by Olan, hand dyed in Iceland. Oh, and this is their sock sport 
base. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot that I'm using my husband's phone. <laughs> Sometimes he gets calls. <laughs> okay, so this is Ola Olan, hand dyed in Iceland. I don't know, I have not heard of them before, um, but beautiful, again, another amazingly talented dyer. Um, Oh, that must be them. <laughs> They've realized he's not going to answer this one and they're going to call him on the other one. <laughs> Yarn. I love that. I don't know. What do you guys think? What should I make with this? Shawl? I'm feeling shawl. I love where um, you alternate a non-mohair with a mohair. I think that's super pretty. And apparently I'm just completely into yellow, but I mean, that would look great with this, right? Totally. So. Uh, the last thing that I want to talk to you about is, um, no, two more things. The first, the, I'll show you this one just real quick. This is a button that I got at the, um, one of the yarn festivals. Isn't that beautiful? This is a Circa 1890s brass button. Um, the button lady was amazing. I could have spent thousands at the button lady. I don't know what she was called. She didn't have a website. She said she just goes to these festivals, but she had gotten her, she had collected her buttons over the years and she'd gotten them from other button collectors. And um, they were very expensive, which is why I only got this one. <laughs> um, but she had like matched ones where there'd be a, a card of all matched buttons that would look amazing, like on a shirt or something. Uh, she did not have a lot of the old vintage sweater size buttons, like the larger buttons. I like like a one inch button. She had a lot of half inchers and there were brass and crystal and they were all well over a hundred years old. Really, really beautiful. If you're ever at a festival, I'm not sure how far and wide she travels, but if you're ever at a festival, definitely go look for that lady because she was awesome. Um, okay. This is the thing I'm so excited to tell you about. Uh, I had my whole fall planned out. I had everything I was gonna be designing and knitting and publishing planned out. Um, and then uh, Susan Anderson of Barrett Wool said, do you wanna do some more stuff? And I said, of course I do. And so we uh, have our hands in a few different projects coming out within the next few months. The first one is a pair of socks. I got special permission to share this with you. The first one is a pair of socks, and I would like to uh, take some pictures of these later. I ordered sock blockers. They have not come yet, but I can't wait to show you socks on sock blockers. Uh, but this is the bear socks, and hopefully uh, I will have some pictures at the end that I can show you. So this is like a, um, <clears throat> oh, it's beautiful. I just love this stitch pattern. It's twisted stitches, partly and partly just cable, but it's very easy to work. Very easy to work. It's just one single panel of this interesting uh, st uh, stitch pattern. That's my thumb over there. <laughs> Not a mitten. And then we have uh, these lines down here, which are similar to uh, the slip stitch heel in the back. And these colors, so this is Barrett Wool, home fingering weight yarn. This is the color called Stationery, and this is the color called Bear. I originally set out to knit this pair of socks entirely in the Bear color, but you'll, you'll remember what happened here. <laughs> this sad, sad story of a beautiful sweater that is knit in a yarn that is just a little bit too dark and it's hard to see. Um, in this business, we're primarily showing you things through pictures. If you see it in person, you can see it really well, but when you have to go for, through video and pictures, you really need things to be knit in a color that you can see. So I originally started out knitting these entirely in this color and hence the name of the socks. And then I was like, it's too dark. You just can't see this beautiful stitch pattern well enough. Um, and so I decided to combine that with the stationary color. Wouldn't it be great if I had sock blockers right now? <laughs> They're coming. They're coming from Ukraine. So slow boat, slow airplane. <laughs> um, anyway, I think that that looks just really pretty. 
and I have kind of <laughs> a shirt that I made. I don't have any sewing. I'm gonna have to go get my sewing so I can share that with you. A shirt that I made from Sew Over It, which is um, the Alex shirt slash dress. And I made it in a, she shows it in a very, um, you know, pretty like lightweight fabric. And I use like a heavyweight flannel looking fabric in a red and a black. <clears throat> and that that looks so good with these socks. It's just, it's the best outfit ever. It's I'm totally gonna wear that when we go pick out a Christmas tree. It's a Christmas tree picking outfit. <laughs> <clears throat> so, very excited to show these to you. Watch Instagram because I'll have some pictures there. Um, I'm not sure when these socks will be out, but this is not a Nitty McPurly pattern. This is a Barrett Wolco pattern. So you'll be able to find it on Ravelry when it is published and you'll be able to get kits for it from Barrett Wool, um, probably in a couple of colors. So there is that. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> so this is the um, Alex shirt by Sew Over It, which I sewed, that I was just talking about. Um, this is a great pattern. It is um, in the My City Break Capsule Wardrobe ebook. So, but the other patterns in it are great too, and I'm currently wearing the Mia jeans that I made from that ebook also. This is a beautiful pattern. It has a lot of ease in the middle. I'm just gonna stand up so you can see it a little bit. Uh, but I put a few darts in the back just to take it in a little. It still has a lot of ease. This is the most comfortable shirt I own. I am absolutely in love with the shirt. So here, you can just see it has kind of like a collar like this. It's got pockets, buttons, a sleeve tab. I wear this all the time. <clears throat> you can see it is not perfect. I'm sure that the lines don't all perfectly match up. Uh, and I am wearing <laughs> the Mia jeans, which is a stretch jean pattern that's a little simpler than the ginger jeans, which is another pattern that's really similar. Anyway, both of these patterns are by Sew Over It, and <laughs> I'm very gracefully showing you my bear socks with my pretend cup of coffee. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm gonna be hopefully putting this movie together using different software than I did before. Hopefully it'll just get better and better and every time the quality will just be a little bit better. So thank you so much for joining me. Please come see me on Instagram, email me. I would love to hear from you. And until I see you next time, happy.